In one of our previous videos, we successfully tried on a crusader's armor. But why stop there? A thousand years before them was another group, which was no less and maybe even more interesting, the Roman Legion. What was the life of regular guys serving the emperor like? No analysis, graphs, and heavy historical data. In the next couple of minutes, we're diving into everyday life, salary, and entertainment of a typical Roman legionary. Let's name your guy Square. Don't be surprised. Back then, there was actually a name like that, and you can often find it on Roman tombstones. If we are being precise, this is a nickname, since the actual Roman names were complicated. They consisted of three parts, praenomen, nomen, and cognomen. To put it simply, a name, surname, and nickname. Kind of like the modern names, except for the last part. Nowadays, we have a second name, and the Romans used to have nicknames instead. You can think of nicknames as the real unique names. For example, Gaius Julius Caesar is quite a puzzle. Gaius is the personal name, Julius is the family name, and Caesar is a nickname. Scientists still can't figure out what it means. Some say that hairy people got that name, and some argue that the name can be translated as godly, but that's beside the point. The point is that boys got their names from their fathers. So the father of Caesar was also named Gaius Julius Caesar. To somehow distinguish the sons and fathers, there were nicknames, senior, junior, or just plain numbers. With girls, things are even worse. At birth, the last name of their father became their first name, and they usually got their last name from their husbands. For example, Julius Caesar's daughter was given the name Julia, and after she married Gnaeus Pompeius Magnus, she became Julia Pompeius. Meanwhile, if there were a lot of sons in a family, they would get second and sometimes third nicknames. As a result, closer to the end of the Roman Empire, it was common to have people with five names. Even the famous Emperor Caligula was also named Gaius Julius Caesar. But for us to not confuse him with the famous predecessor killed by Brutus, historians only use his nickname in the textbooks. Pretty bizarre, right? But our mercenary is a simple working guy, so he has a regular name. For example, Lucius Cincia Quadratus. The last part means a square. One of our ancestors was Lucius Cincia Alamedus, who fought against Hannibal. Even 300 years later, we still have his name, and the only uniquely thing about us is the nickname Square, the origins of which are also a mystery. Perhaps we liked eating a little too much. The year is 15 AD, and the Roman Empire is as strong as ever. From the north of France to the middle of Africa, they own everything. And all that thanks to the strongest army of legionnaires. One of them is our square. By the way, the name Lucius was probably only used by our family members. Others mostly used surnames and nicknames. So our mercenaries were mostly referred to as Cynthia or Square. Our dad is a poor farmer, which was the case for the majority of Legionaries' parents. So once Square hit 18, he went to the army. Although it was basically mandatory, the conditions were luxurious for the time. Recently, Gaius Julius Caesar raised the Legionaries' pay to 900 sesterces a year. That's about nine golden coins, and an additional three were given for agreeing to a service contract. Historical excavations in Pompeii suggest that a person could easily survive a day for two sesterces. No wonder, since one could buy you four bowls of soup. If you would like to know a very rough comparison to modern currency, one sesterce is around two euros. For example, a liter of wine in the year 15 would cost our pal Square exactly that two euros, and if he wanted a mule, that would cost a thousand. Not bad analogies to reality, right? For now, he should focus on the legendary four months of training for newcomers. In one of Vegetius' treaties about warfare, he wrote a simple but true phrase. The fact that the Romans managed to take over the entire world can be explained only by their military preparation, camp discipline, and military practices, writes Vegetius, and he is absolutely right. In comparison to later groups, legionnaires were a machine. After tiresome training, our square will learn to speed walk 35 kilometers in five hours, carrying 20 kilos of equipment. Along the way, he will also learn the complex system of commands, which are signaled by a horn or flags. Roman generals believe that holding formation was the key to victory. Given the results of Roman wars, it's hard to argue with them. During the young warrior's training, they worked on everything, turtle formation, infantry square, wedge formation, fencing with wooden swords, archery. Square will leave this place as a killing machine. 
will most importantly be capable of anything. Most modern armies can't brag about such level of care in training their soldiers. Since legionnaires were even trained to swim in arms in order for them to not accidentally drown when crossing some river. Remember how in our video about the Crusaders we discussed dysentery and antisentery, which cost thousands of soldiers their lives? A millennia before the Crusades, there was no such problem in the Roman army. The legionaries' health was of most importance, and any product that got into our boy square's hands was examined in all possible ways by special people. Even the water was assessed by the officers to make sure that soldiers didn't get poisoning. And if things did go wrong, or when people got injured on the battlefield, the Roman Empire had special medical units. They were actually the first in modern history to have them. In every legion, there was a medic. They also built infirmaries, and sick soldiers got all the necessary help. We have an order that was written back then by one of the legion's commanders. It says that during storming a city, the camp should be built several kilometers away from the besieged area. Why? So the wounded couldn't hear the noise from the battle and could peacefully recover. Close attention was paid to one other important detail. Fighting spirit. No crowded dining rooms and feeling like slaves. Roman legionnaires were split into centuries, and what's more important, into contaburniums. These were small eight-man platoons who went through everything together. The Roman idea was to have these eight people do everything together, starting from eating to chilling at night. So by the time they got to war, the guys fought, first of all, not for the emperor, but for their contaburnium, for their friends and comrades. Not only was that not prohibited, but even encouraged from above. The soldiers' priorities were their friends' lives, then the status of their centuria of 100 people, then the status of the entire legion made of 60 centurias. The Romans revolutionized warfare, since on the battlefield they didn't have some strangers fighting alongside each other. They had friends who lived together. Many tombstones of that era have the word brother on them, showing just how far some of those friendships between soldiers went. However, there were some similarities to modern armies. Since not all legions were constantly at war, our square would sometimes spend an entire year as a policeman or a builder. There are known cases of legionnaires collecting taxes and working as guards. During peacetime, legions gathered once a year on Natalius Aquila, a so-called birthday. There was a feast, demonstration training, and other festivities to keep up the fighting spirit, which wasn't always high, but still helped Rome conquer half of the world. But even during military campaigns, legionnaires had things to do. Since gambling was at its peak, the guys played dice, flipped a coin, heads and tails were used to be called heads and ships, and even had more complicated tic-tac-toe type game. The game was called mill wheel, and to win, the player had to place three chips in a row. The most invested guys even invented something like modern backgammon called tabula, in which you could lose a fortune. It escalated to the point when Tabula was outlawed by the government, but some sneaky soldiers still managed to get away with playing it. We can only hope that our square doesn't develop a gambling addiction. On average in the empire, only 60% of legionnaires lived to retirement. But remember, this number was lowered significantly by military hotspots, where legions lost up to half of their soldiers a day. Also, don't pay attention to some popular misconceptions. Even in textbooks, we sometimes see the following phrase. In ancient civilizations, the average life expectancy was 30 years, and living to 60 was unbelievable. That's a lie, a terrible lie. The reason behind it is childhood mortality. After antibiotics were invented, it decreased drastically and made the average lifespan go up significantly. Since if we take an 80-year-old man and a one-year-old child who died from a sickness, we get an average of 40 years. That's how we arrive at such a low number when calculating average lifespan in ancient history. However, now the scientists are confident that if a person in ancient Rome survived until puberty, their chance to have a happy and long life was as good as ours. So if our pal Square survives the 20 years in the army, he has a good a chance that by 40 he will have a beautiful wife and will live peacefully at a farm, gifted by the government or bought for taxpayers' money and leave pay. Sure, the life of a legionary wasn't easy, but can anyone really call their life that? One thing can be said with certainty. In ancient Rome, soldiers weren't considered trash. There was constant training on disciplinary, fighting skills, and physical conditioning. The food quality was controlled, and there were always medics available to help soldiers, even on a battlefield. Of course, stuff happened. Sometimes entire centuries deserted the army. In some places, there were plenty of same-sex relationships. In some places, legionnaires lost their minds. 
Those are all exceptions, since at the peak of the Roman Empire, its legions worked like a machine, organized at a level that can rival modern governments. Our square thought that he had a good life and was fighting for something great. Moreover, he had a well-deserved rest and pretty good pay from the government waiting ahead of him. If you want to know more about ancient Rome, don't be greedy. Leave us a like and let us know in the comments. See you later, friends!